not all back pain is created equal. And if we understand that we have a naturally asymmetrical body, then we probably are not likely to have the same exact reason as to why our back would hurt on one side or the other. And a common misconception I see is people address back pain the same depending on what side it's on. People often give blanket advice for, hey, if you have back pain, then just try these stretches or just try activating these muscles and you'll feel way better. But a lot of people don't have success with that because they don't understand that we have a naturally asymmetrical body. Like I always say, if we can agree that a lot more people are right-handed than left-handed, if we can agree that we have a heart on the left side of our body, an asymmetrical brain, asymmetrical diaphragm structure, then we have a lot of reasons for understanding how an asymmetrical body can set us up for asymmetrical differences in back pain. What we're referring to here is the left AIC pattern. And in this pattern, we have organ asymmetry, we have brain asymmetry, we have respiration differences from side to side, which influence us to have a difference in our ability to load one side versus the other. What that means is that we are shifted over to the right hemisphere of our body. And that means that we have a higher right hip, a lower right shoulder, and we also are going to have a spine that's overall oriented towards the right side. So if we flip it around now and look at the back, what we're going to see is because this higher right hip we're overloading the right side. So this right side is pretty compressed and pulled together. So oftentimes when people present with back pain on the right side, it's generally because they're unable to learn how to get out of their right side or push out of their right side. Muscles that are primarily tight on this right side are the quadratus laborum, and we also have tighter obliques and abs on this side. We oftentimes have a tighter right adductor or groin pulling us over to the right side. So we are going to be biased towards more muscles of propulsion being tighter on the left side, like our glute max, like our quads. So if we're unable to shift our body weight over to the left side and accept that load through our heel, and then as we move on to more of our midfoot to access that internal rotation, then that's going to be very difficult for us to be able to get those joint actions effectively and genuinely without compensation. Because this left hip is biased towards external rotation, we are going to be missing internal rotation. And the easiest possible way for most people to access internal rotation when they don't have it is to push their pelvis more forward. And what that does is it opens up space for this femur to go back into the hip socket. What we can also see when someone's walking to find internal rotation is a hip hike where the hip literally hikes up like this when they load their body weight onto that side, which allows again room for the femur to go back into internal rotation. So think about how this could work out if we have more of a forward left hip, then that is already naturally shortening the back extensors and elongating the abs on this left side. But if we continue to not have internal rotation on the left, then we can use additional strategies that will help us find internal rotation, but that further compresses the back. Now, these are just some of the biomechanical reasons why we can see back pain on the left or the right. It's certainly not an all encompassing review, but the general idea is we need to learn how to push out of the right side and accept load into our left side. Let's look at the front side first. In order for us to shift out of this compressed right side, we need to be able to access external rotation of this pelvis to push us over to the left side. And this femur needs to learn to externally rotate as well. Also, because this is being pulled down with this lower right shoulder, these ribs are also internally rotated. So opening up the whole right side can be quite beneficial. And this is a great exercise to do that. This is the sideline Swiss ball right apical expansion with left IO and TA from Postural Restoration Institute. To set up for this, we need a Swiss ball up against the wall so we can stay very stable and we're not gonna roll around. We wanna have a pretty straight line from this top shoulder all the way down towards that left foot. And we have this right leg crossed so it can be relatively flat on the ground there. And then this other arm is just hanging out, stabilizing. So we gotta make sure we can be in a position where we can totally melt over this ball. So we have this thing up against our left abs and our left low ribs. So the apex of this peak of the ball should be up against the lowest left ribs. And we should just be totally relaxed. Now we're gonna take that right arm and just get it overhead, totally relaxed, just maybe slightly behind the ear, but not so much that you arch your back. You should be able to keep your back slightly flexed and your hips tucked the entire time. Now, as long as that arm above the head is 100% relaxed, we're just gonna exhale through our mouth, sigh all the air out, and we're gonna feel our left side abs engage. Hold that as you inhale through your nose. You're gonna feel all this stretch out from your ab wall to your lat, this whole right side's gonna open up. 
then get a full, long, nice exhale again through the mouth. Make sure you're getting all that air out. A good exhale is going to provide a nice full expansion via the inhale through the nose. And this pelvis needs to learn to externally rotate and also recruit muscles that are responsible for more of that external rotation. Muscles like the glute max, the hip abductors, such as the glute med, can be very helpful in this context for learning how to get more pelvic external rotation to push out of the right side. So what we're gonna do here is get in, as the name suggests, a 90-90 position, meaning a 90 degree bend at both the knees and the hips. And we're gonna have a ball between the knees that allows us to just keep our knees in line with our feet and also our hips. And we have a very light band around the top of the knees. So what we're gonna to do to start, and we have this set up so that Trevor can rest his heels and his Achilles on this right here and keep that 90 degree bend right here. So this is gonna allow him to have something to pull down into initially. So what he's gonna do is I'm gonna have him feel his whole foot flat on the wall, but pull down with his heels, and that's going to tuck his hips off of the floor just a little bit. So his low back is flat, but his tailbone's off, so he should feel hamstrings on both sides right now. But what we're gonna do now, we're going to push through the inner edge of the right foot arch, specifically right here where the ball of the big toe is and the inner heel into the wall. This is more of a push. And as he does that, he's gonna push his right knee up and his right knee out without losing that right foot arch. And that should kick on his lower right glute muscle. The left knee is gonna stay in the same position. It's just chilling, still digging down. So the left is more of a pull down, right is more of a push into the wall. If he does that right, he's gonna feel left hamstring, right lower glute max. What you're gonna feel is that your right low back comes off of the floor a little bit more than your left. You get a little bit heavier on your left low back and that's okay, that's to be expected. Just make sure that you maintain that slight tuck of your pelvis, maintaining that low back on the floor, specifically on the left more. What Trevor can do now is take his fingers, lace them together, put them on his low ribs and just exhale through his mouth, nice and relaxing, as chill as he can. The only reason why he feels tension in his stomach is because of the exhale. He's not crunching, he's not trying to do anything. He's just feeling those side abs engaged because of that long exhale. Five to 10 seconds, then he's gonna close his mouth, inhale through his nose, maintaining a slight degree of tension in those side abs. Not a six pack, but those side abs right there. So you'll feel that the longer you exhale, the more you're gonna feel those side abs engage, and that's a good thing. On the left side, what we need to do is get this pelvis to come back and turn in into genuine internal rotation. So what we need to do is recruit deep muscles like the internal obliques and the transverse abs on the left, which attach here and on this ilium right here to help pull it back like so. And that will allow us to be able to shut off some of the back and also bring these ribs down on the left, which are oftentimes hiked up. Looking down lower on the left, we need this femur to internally rotate and adduct. So we really need muscles of adduction on the left side, like the adductor, and also we need to get the anterior or front glute med fibers to help us with that internal rotation. So if you think about what I just said over the last couple of minutes, it's kind of like we need to flip flop what the left and right side are capable of doing. The right side needs to learn how to push and get more propulsion and external rotation. The left side needs to learn how to load and get more internal rotation and adduction and be able to pull this pelvis back. If you think about some of the exercises you've already seen, notice how there was a degree of left side bend and compression on the left side. That's going to help facilitate the left abs. So if we can get these left abs on, that'll help open up this right side in addition. So muscles that help pull the pelvis in and back are really important, such as the hamstring that attaches on the back side of the pelvis here. Also, the adductor right here on the inner thigh and groin, and also the front fibers of the glute med, because the back fibers of the glute med on the right side are more helpful for abduction. The front fibers are better for internal rotation. This is the 90-90 hip lift with a left hip shift from Postural Restoration Institute. The purpose of this is to pull that left hip from a forward orientation to more of a neutral orientation. So to set up for this, we need to get in a 90-90 position where we have a 90 degree bend at both our knee and our hip, and the feet are flat on the wall. And we have a ball in between our knees that allows us to keep our knees in line with our toes and our knees in line with our hips. So it shouldn't be wider than that. It shouldn't be that much smaller than that. And what we're gonna to do to set up is make sure that we can feel our heels flat on this wall, but we're not gonna peel our toes off. We're gonna to keep them flat. And so keeping our hands on our low rib cage, Trevor will have you 
exhale through your mouth nice and soft as you pull down on that wall with your heels. And again, keeping the whole foot flat, he should feel both hamstrings engage. And he should feel like his tailbone is about an inch or two off of the ground. But if his spine was like Velcro, it's just being peeled one vertebrae at a time off of the ground. But again, he's not going that high. So with both hamstrings engaged, he's now going to do a hip shift. And this is harder than it looks, so make sure you go nice and slow. I'm going to have Trevor shift his right knee up and his left knee down, which is going to move his hips, and that's okay. And then I'm going to have him press gently into the ball with just his left side, not his right side. So at this point, he should feel his left inner hamstring and his left groin, inner groin muscle engage. The right side should have maybe a little bit of hamstring, but not a lot of muscular tension is happening on this right side. Once he has that, he's going to exhale through his mouth, getting all that air out, really all of that soft five to 10 second exhale until he feels his side abs, not his six pack, but a little bit of side abs, and then hold that tension nice and soft as he inhales through his nose. He should feel his rib cage expand. He's going to do five breaths of that, maintaining this position right here. If we can secure the left abs, the left adductor, and the left glute med, those are the muscles that help pull and load us over to this side when we are moving towards internal rotation in mid stance of gait. So what we're going to do here is set up with some sort of table object, which is around waist height and we have a book or something that's about one to two inches thick underneath our left side, our left foot. Now the book needs to be long enough that the whole foot can be flat. Now what we're gonna do is with our feet parallel and hip width apart, is we're gonna place our hands on this table or in this case the plow box and I want Trevor to round his back and tuck his hips. Good, just like that. Now he's going to shift his left hip back. So he needs to do that by pushing his right knee forward and pushing his hips back and off to the side on the left and he's going to push his left knee slightly in. Now his feet are in the same place but he should feel his left inner thigh engage and he's going to feel most of his weight on this left heel here but his whole foot is flat. On the right side he has about 30-ish percent of his weight and it's just kind of hanging out there with the right knee going forward feeling that right foot arch. Now what I want you to do, Trevor, is keep your back rounded, keep to the left on that left heel, and exhale and squat down maybe 20 to 30 degrees. And once he gets to that position where he feels like he might start to lose it, again, just 20, 30 degrees, he's just gonna hold that position. And he's gonna breathe in through his nose, out through his mouth. Now, as he breathes out through his mouth, he's gonna feel these left side abs engage. I want him to hold those left side abs as he inhales through his nose and then he should really feel his right side open up. So in this bottom position, you know you're doing it right. If you feel your left inner thigh, your left heel, whole foot flat, maybe some left outside hip, and for some people, they're gonna feel a big posterior capsule stretch on this left side in their left back pocket. The most common mistake in this activity is that people will not get their hip to the left enough. So we want this hip right here slightly outside this knee right here. So he should be able to do that without losing his whole foot flat on the left. And also we want to make sure we're slightly side meant to the left, just a little bit. And then in addition to that, people will start to lose it as they go down. So as they go down, they'll start to actually shift more right like that. We need to make sure we're shifting left still as we go down, pushing our left knee in as we go down, which is ultimately just going to keep the left knee in line with the left big toe. A great thing about these exercises is as we get more competent at feeling and finding the right things, we can integrate them together. So we could do something where we're feeling the muscles of right external rotation, working with the muscles of left internal rotation with specific foot references to help us get that at our pelvis biomechanically, but also have the muscles contribute to that.